The Indiana FFA State Convention kicks off today. This is the first time in 92 years the convention will not be held at Purdue University due to COVID-19 guidelines at the school. For today's Indiana Farm Report, I spoke to Carroll County FFA members who have been getting ready for the convention. Go around but not too tight, obviously. You don't want to cut circulation off. Practicing for the FFA State Convention. Then you take your vet wrap. Right now, we'll just be using purple. Is what Carroll County High School FFA member. This is the one you want to be very careful with preventing wrinkles. And future veterinarian Grace Ayers is doing. I want to become a veterinarian, so this is definitely one of my favorite competitions. As part of the vet science program, Ayers uses this fake dog to practice one of the tasks that she could be judged on. So for my CDE, one of the practicums that we will possibly have to do is bandaging a dog. Ayers is not the only Carroll County FFA member competing this week. I wrote a speech, about a five page long speech, and I had to memorize all of it. So we decided to do ours on urban horticulture. This is actually our first year as a chapter competing for ag sales. With competitions happening in a variety of categories, Indiana FFA State Officer Luke Sproul says the convention serves multiple purposes. The whole goal is to bring together FFA members members to celebrate their achievements, help build their personal growth and leadership skills, and then also prepare them for career success. The week also includes sessions, workshops, banquets, and community service. And after having a virtual convention last year, we're all just really excited to see FFA go back to normal and get to gather in person. But there is one change this year. In all of our 92 years as a state association, we have had state convention at Purdue University. Due to COVID-19 regulations at the university, the convention will take place at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Portions of the convention will also be held at Connor Prairie and Hamilton Southeastern High School. We're looking forward to putting our own unique spin on state convention and just adapting to the new space that we have and just really seeing what it's going to be like at the state fairgrounds. The 2021 convention starts today and will end on Thursday. It will be taking place at three different locations in the Indianapolis area, including the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Have you ever wondered where zoo animals go during hot days like we had over the weekend? We'll answer that question for you coming up. And we've got a beautiful week ahead, less humid, lots of sunshine, and even some cooler temperatures. I'll have your forecast straight ahead.
watching News 18 this morning. News from where you live. We all look for cold air and a cold drink when the weather gets hot, just like it was over the weekend. But what options do animals at the Columbian Park Zoo have? Well, News 18's Peter Hewlett has that answer. Indiana summers, to nobody's surprise, are hot. June has an average high of 83 degrees, according to the National Weather Service, and that goes up to 86 degrees in July. Luckily for our furry, feathery, and scaly friends at the Columbian Park Zoo, the zookeepers are staying ahead of the curve, according to senior keeper Victoria Roach. All of our animals always have access to fresh, clean water. Um, during these temperatures, we especially give them extra um, sources of water, so either extra water bowls and um, like bigger pools that they can get their whole body into. The animals at the zoo come from all over the world. That being said, many were raised in captivity and have adjusted to their homes. You know, they've been here their whole lives. So like even in the winter, like the wallabies are used to like warmer temperatures, but in the winter they love snow. But of course, in the near future, the zoo will be home to some famous flightless birds typically associated with colder climates. The Columbia Park Zoo penguins are expected to arrive sometime this year at this very exhibit. But contrary to what you might think, these penguins are going to be just fine and dandy in the Indiana heat. African penguins with their own brand new exhibit. Behind the enclosures, in case they do feel a bit too warm, they'll have their own air-conditioned cove to waddle into. Um, so most people think penguins only come from cold climates, but um, there's actually quite a few uh, species of penguins that live in warm climates. If the past few days are any indication, they'll feel right at home. From the Columbian Park Zoo, Peter Hewlett, News 18. Along with pools, misting fans, sprinklers, and indoor shelters, animals are often given blocks of ice with food and toys inside them as a form of enrichment to keep them cool and satisfied. And now, your Precision 18 forecast, News 18. Weather from where you live. And we're all getting a break from this muggy weather, including our furry friends. Just a nice day on tap for us for our Monday as we all head back to work. 64 degrees. We'll have mostly sunny skies. We've got some clouds out there too, but again, it will be a sunny, pleasant day for us. Take a look at that dew point that tells the story. 59, very low. Relative humidity is at 71%, and the winds are out of the west at 6 miles an hour. Those winds will pick up for later this afternoon. We could have gusts up to 20 to 25 miles per hour uh, by this afternoon, but it will be very warm. So warm and breezy today, but the dry air is in place. Current temperatures, we are all in the 60s, feeling good out there this morning, and this is really telling the story here. In the 50s, you can see well below all of that. We had temperatures, dew points, in the 60s and the 70s all last week. Not the case this week. We get a nice break, uh, nice relief for us for this Monday. Mostly sunny skies by 9 a.m. It will be breezy, 79, and then we're looking at those strong gusts by 1 o'clock this afternoon. Mostly sunny skies, temperatures around 85. We're going to warm up to 87 degrees today by 5 o'clock with some breezy conditions, but plenty of sunshine. So it will be feeling good out there today and even tonight cooling off and to the 50s as high pressure keeps us high and dry, mainly clear overnight. You can see nothing happening here. We've got some activity to the north of us that will stay there and track off to the east. We may see a few clouds spill in here from that system uh, through tonight and tomorrow, but not a big deal for us, not a concern. Overnight lows dropping into the 50s. It will feel good out there with those mainly clear skies and then tomorrow waking up to some cooler conditions and we're going to stay cooler tomorrow. Highs only in the low to the mid 80s tomorrow. So it's looking fabulous. Even Wednesday, we're going to be slowly getting back to normal in the low 80s. Uh, Wednesday just as nice. So you can see for the lunchtime hour, we are going to have those brisk winds coming out of the north northwest, but it will be dry and sunny even through this evening. And then tomorrow, another start to the day with some clear skies. We're expecting sunshine all day tomorrow. All that spotty shower activity with that system should stay off to our east. We will just stay high and dry with those clear skies on through our Wednesday. Take a look at your seven day forecast. Do enjoy 87 today with those windy conditions tonight. 
down into the mid to the upper 50s. Tomorrow looks fabulous. So does Wednesday. Wednesday's high 84. Then we start to warm up for Thursday and Friday, becoming a little more humid. 91 on Friday. Chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms, and that's going to continue giving us some unsettled weather for the weekend. Temperatures in the 80s. And now your News 18 traffic report, sponsored by Tipmont REMC. And there's that sunshine. We've got a mix in clouds and sun, mainly sunny though for this morning. Temperatures looking good. We've got dry road conditions. I-65 looking good. Some light traffic there and Sagamore Parkway and South Street. We're looking good there as well. No problems on those roadways as we all head. We all head back to work this morning. 67 to 74 degrees for your morning commute. Sunshine. Take those sunglasses with you. Just a pleasant day and your drive times are looking pretty normal here too. To Logansport via 25, a 46 minute drive to Crawfordsville on 231, 41 minutes and to Indianapolis on I-65, your typical 64 minute drive. Now, Lisa, even though we're still going to be in the 80s this week, it's really a break for us compared to what we saw last week. Yes, it's going to feel so much better. You can take the 80s and even mm -hmm. 90 degree heat as long as you don't have those humid conditions. So that's what it's going to feel like this week. Very nice. In fact, we will be cooling off though for tonight, tomorrow, lows at night. Very nice, very comfortable. It's so really, enjoy it. Yeah, it's really a much needed break oh, here for us yeah. with everything that we dealt with, especially Saturday. Man, Saturday was so hot. That was unbearable Saturday. And then yeah. also a little bit breezy for us today too. Yeah, we'll have some wind gusts up to 20, 25 miles per hour. So might be a little windy on your commute home, but I think it'll feel good as temperatures are still going to be in the upper 80s today. Sounds great. Lisa, yeah. thank you so much. Okay. President Biden is in mainland Europe for the NATO summit today. Details about the leading issues on the agenda coming up next. Oh, yeah. Pleasant day for us for our Monday. We're looking at warm temperatures up to 87 with breezy conditions. We will have wind gusts up to 20 to 25 miles per hour possible through the afternoon, but still very pleasant with that dry air in place, less humid. Tomorrow looks fabulous, 85 with mostly sunny skies, lows at night in the mid 50s. So on the cool side, that will feel good. Wednesday, 84, looking good, but warming up for the end of the week. Chance for showers and thunderstorms by Friday.
You're watching News 18 This Morning. News from where you live. Welcome back. President Biden is continuing his eight day trip through Europe after spending the weekend in England with G7 world leaders and meeting Queen Elizabeth for tea. He now heads to NATO to discuss America's adversities. CBS's Ian Lee has the details from London. President Biden is in Brussels, Belgium for a NATO summit today. Whether we pull together as democracies is going to uh, determine whether our grandkids look back 15 years from now and say, did they step up? Are democracies as relevant and as powerful as they have been? The main topics for discussion, according to NATO Secretary General, China, Russia, cyber attacks and global terrorism. The fact that we then have all NATO leaders meeting uh, uh, today uh, on Monday together uh, is, is a unique opportunity to strengthen our transatlantic bond, not least because we have a new U.S. administration. Fresh off a G7 that appeared to be full of cooperation and unity, the Biden administration is hopeful that it sent a message to Russia ahead of Wednesday's summit with Vladimir Putin in Geneva, Switzerland. America is back at the table. Putin said U.S.-Russian relations are at a 30-year low. President well, Biden agrees. Clear. I think he's right. It's a low point. And uh, it depends on how he responds to acting consistent with international norms, which in many cases he has not. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said it's unlikely the meeting leads to drastic changes. This is not going to be a, a, a flip the, the, the light switch moment. Um, what the president is going to, to make clear to President Putin is that uh, we seek a more stable, predictable relationship. The two leaders will hold separate press conferences following their summit. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Between his meetings with NATO and President Putin, tomorrow President Biden will take part in the U.S.-EU summit. A weekend shooting sends multiple people to the hospital where the shooting happened. And an update on the victims, your top stories are next. And you're taking a live look outside right now on this Monday morning, a much needed break temperature wise for us. Lisa Montgomery joins us right after the break.
watching News 18 this morning. News from where you live. All right, welcome back. Let's get you out the door this morning with your top stories. The identity of the two victims in Friday's I-65 crash have been identified. 33-year-old Dana Beck and 30-year-old Nathan Fields were in a white Chevy Tahoe. Both were from Kentland. As we previously reported, Beck lost control of the vehicle while traveling south on the interstate when they were sideswiped by a Mazda Miata. The Tahoe then crossed the medium and collided with a Greyhound bus in the northbound lanes. The Greyhound hit the Tahoe and both vehicles came to a stop in a ditch on the east side of the northbound lanes. Police are working to learn more about a West Lafayette apartment complex shooting that left multiple people injured. The Tippecanoe County Sheriff's Office received shots fired calls after 11 o'clock Saturday night. It happened at the Cottages apartment complex in West Lafayette. Two people were shot. Cahill Arrington was shot in the abdomen and Cahill Christopher was shot in the middle of his back. Both injuries are not life threatening. For the first time in 92 years, the Indiana FFA State Convention will not be held at Purdue University. The convention kicks off today and will end on Thursday. Due to COVID-19 protocols at the university, the state convention is now taking place at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Portions of the convention will also be held at Connor Perry and Hamilton Southeastern High School. Lisa, taking a look now at our forecast, a much different story compared to last week. Oh yes, get out there and enjoy it. 87 for today's high, breezy conditions, less humid, very pleasant. We will have some wind gusts though, up to 20 to 25 miles per hour later this afternoon. 59 for tonight's low, beautiful tomorrow and Wednesday, Tuesday 85. Wednesday 84, plenty of sunshine, lows at night, very comfy, and then it looks like we warm up for the end of the week, maybe becoming a little more humid. 88 on Thursday, 91 on Friday, chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms on Friday. Here we are still in the 80s, but it is a break from what we had last <laughs> last that week. That humidity, I tell you. Oh, yeah. Man, it was, a, it was a lot to deal with. It really was, especially <laughs> Saturday too. Saturday it, it was so unbearable. Hot. Man, so it is nice to see some cooler temperatures yeah. this week. Still in the 80s, but a little bit cooler yeah. for us. All right, that is all the time we have for today. We'll see you back here at 726. Thanks for watching and have a great Monday.